Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Advice with Alex and Friends, the podcast. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm joined by my beautiful co-host, Novella. Hi. <laughs> and of course, make sure that you follow the podcast on Advice with Alex. Yeah, Advice with Alex. Well, how can I forget that? <laughs> on Instagram and on Twitter for like any updates and stuff. And also wherever you are listening please make sure that you subscribe and if you're watching on youtube make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss a video or any additional content as well so yeah this we're gonna i feel like we should just hop straight in yeah and but you're gonna lead this one yeah yeah so um i wanted to talk a little bit about colorism it's kind of come back up again you know it's been something we've probably that has been spoken about for ages now but um it's popped back up again so what had happened was a little bit of background story so there's been this thing about um black women being i think five times more likely to die during childbirth Mm -hmm. which is a really scary statistic um was that just in the uk yeah just the uk just the uk yeah and um, there's been some talks about it. And um, I think there's like a pioneer, I think Candy Spraithwaite, mm-hmm. who's been talking about it. So she's the author of I'm Not Your Baby Mother. Um, yeah, she's she's a great author and she's she's brilliant. Um, she does a lot of um, presenting. Mm-hmm. I think she does like Lorraine and stuff. And she does some fashion things as well. She's she's brilliant. And okay, she's so, she's so has, she has accolades. She has accolades. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. And so I think it's really close to her heart. I think I think the reason why it's don't quote me on this. I think it's really close to her heart because I think she nearly experienced kind of losing her life during childbirth. So it's something that she can relate to. But don't quote me on that. I think that's what what the issue is about that. So she's always kind of had an interest in kind of speaking and kind of researching as to why is it black women are more likely um, to pass away um, during childbirth compared to like white people. And, um, you know, she's a dark skinned woman. Mm -hmm. Um, So she said she was in talks with the BBC. Mm -hmm. The BBC are so problematic. They love a saga and a drama. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry to anyone that works at the BBC. They're always so problematic. And um, so she said she was doing this some research because there was going to be a BBC programme on it, which she, I think she was part of kind of like the production, but I think she thought she was part of like the hosting as well and okay. would kind of so own it. so she was it. behind the scenes. Yes. So she, right. So she got into talks with them did yeah. she, and she thought that she was... She was going to be like executor, sorry, let me rephrase it, sorry, executive producer, but really she was just an honorary executive producer. Absolutely. Just by name, no power. But just by name, no power. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, So she said she was in talks from March 2020 about Mm. it. And then I think it was only up until a couple of weeks ago where they, her manager or someone or publicist had told her that. You know, that's not the route that they're willing to take it. They wanted her, basically, they wanted her ideas and kind of wanted some steer from her, but they didn't want basically the face, it seemed like. Okay, that's how that's how she... That's, perceived. that's what she said. Yes, that's okay. what she said. Okay. So don't take this as gospel truth, but that's mm-hmm. what she said. Right. Um, and then we found out then a couple of days ago, I actually saw on like Rochelle Humes, who, um, if you guys don't know, she's um, Marvin Humes' wife and she's like a presenter, um, singer. No, just remove the singer. Yeah. That's why I just pulled stuff that <laughs> yeah. says singer. Like, no shade, but she hasn't sang for, since she was like in... Um, S Club Juniors. S Club Juniors. Yeah. So... And this even generation her, even her presenting is uh, questionable. But anyways, you know, we digress, you know, is what it is. What it is. <laughs> what it is. But um, so she was going to be the face of it. So she had put out like on her Instagram, I think earlier on this week to say, you know, she's going to be she's working with the BBC about um, hosting this and kind of sharing about black, why black people, um, what women are more likely to um pass away during childbirth mm. and then um then it all kind of kicked off there mm. because I think people were just like well why if Candice has been talking about this and she kind of owned it and I think she she thought that she was going to be presenting it why is it all of a sudden we've brought Rochelle who is of mixed heritage you know lighter skinned to present this mm-hmm. you know this is about 
black women, mm-hmm. not about mixed. Is no it, offense. So, not so about is it not including? Mi- because I guess the line with that is there. Mm. Unless it's blurred. Yeah, there, there's a blurred line, isn't there, yeah. between mixed race and, and black women, yeah. especially if you're mixed race and you look black. black. Yeah. And to a lot of white people, mixed race people are black, black anyway. People. And you've got a, a lot of mixed race people identify as black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As well. So that's the that's the kind of the blurred, blurred line, line with it. Yeah. yeah. So I think there was this whole, then it all kind of kicked off a little bit where I think Candice was a bit upset. She, in all fairness, the way she handled it was very gracefully. Okay. Uh, compared to her counterparts, some of them were acting a bit mad. Who, but who, who was acting mad? <laughs> some people were. No, no I've not mentioned it. <laughs> some people were acting mad. Well, like people on Candice's side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think okay. they. I think they. they what? I uh, know. I, I think it's a bit extreme for me to say we're acting mad. I just think they were. They. I think they felt for her, and okay. I got the reason they why they passionate. got upset and really they passionate more, about and it. They, they decided but, to carry her one yeah, on the head. Okay, but right. I feel like you know, there's a way sometimes that you go about it, and the way Candice did it was such a gracious way. Yeah. She did it as as a queen. Um, in terms of her response, you know, she did say, you know, she was a bit, you know, taken back by it, but she's just like, you know, we're going to move from it. And um, she still wants to kind of raise awareness about it. So it was just, it just brought this whole thing on the forefront again about colorism, about like light skinned people mm-hmm. kind of being, sometimes they're the, seen as the spokespeople for black black people black mm-hmm. women sometimes mm-hmm. it's always kind of like the lighter ones that seem to get the i don't know get seem, the representation yeah and the, and the opportunities the opportunities yeah. yeah to talk about things yeah things like that because it was funny because i was even watching a program like last year when we had this whole kind of black lives matter movement mm-hmm. going on during the summer and the cha- channel four did a show called um let's talk about race okay and where celebrities came on and they were talking about their kind of racial um experiences but a lot of them were from mixed backgrounds okay so again it was just like okay like we we get you will go through racism but you i think people sometimes think this is not my opinion but i think sometimes people think that they only half go through it Mm. they don't go through the full things that a fully black person would necessarily go for because sometimes they might seem like you know mixed race people can switch it on and off as they want i don't know with like the can they switch on and off? Because uh, because the thing is, listen, m- once you have more than a few drops of melanin, you're considered, you're considered black, black yeah. basically. Yeah. And the light skin or dark skin, I feel like the colorism thing, obviously it is is rooted in from racism. Yeah. Because it's a measure of your proximity to whiteness. Yeah. Um, but ultimately colorism is our issue within our community. It's mm. not a seen as a, a white issue. No, 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 it's ours. Black is black. Yeah. Light, dark, maybe they might be more receptive or they might find the lighter skin um, folks more palatable, but essentially they're still black. And they'll yeah. remind you that you are black. Yeah. That you are not one of them. Absolutely. And I've never seen a white person say, oh, mixed race people are white. Yeah, no. Ever, no. ever in my life. They will remind family, even family members that they have, who are mixed race, they will remind you that you are a black. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it just brought on this whole thing about kind of, you know, not just mixed race, but I'm just, we were just talking about like light skin yep. versus dark skin mm-hmm. girls, um, kind of on your television screens and who are you more likely to see on there yeah. that represent us as a whole. So it was just interesting to kind of watch that kind of play out. Um, because, um, yeah, I don't know. Have you been aware of your, your your kind of your skin tone and how you might be compared Perceived. to someone? Yeah, to someone that's lighter than you. Do you know that's don't really? Do you know it's funny that you say that because for the longest time I always thought I was dark skinned but I've been <laughs> corrected. Really? So yeah, I I just I don't know. Like I always thought in my mind, I just thought I was dark skin. I don't know. But then Because people say it. I've been told that obviously yeah. that no, actually you, and I, and obviously I see it. I'm not dark skin. No, you're but not. In my but in my head, yeah. I genuinely think and feel like I'm dark, if that that's makes how, sense. That's how I describe um, myself, yeah. 
Um, but obviously, like, I guess most people just say, oh, you're just black. Yeah. If that makes sense. I feel like there's a certain tone where it's like, they don't have a label for it. You're not light skin. You're not dark skin. You're not a brown. I don't even know what browning means. Yeah. But that's something that gets thrown around. But you're just black. So that's, I, I believe I'm on that spectrum. Like, I'm yeah. just black. And I feel like I first heard that from boys. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In secondary school. Yeah. I didn't realise I... I know I was like darker skinned, but I didn't feel, I thought I was like proper dark skin mm-hmm. because of the way guys used to say about my skin tone. Mm-hmm. It was just like, oh, Novella's dark skin. And I was just like, okay. Mm-hmm. So then that's when I started saying, so if you fingered me and I would say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm kind of dark skin. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> It's so weird. Like it's it's, it's so, so weird. weird. The obsession with like yeah. skin tone, with skin tone, and what makes me, what makes it weirder is you know, it's so. When I think black, right, you would think that almost being darker would be more celebrated. If that makes sense, yeah. But it's it's the reverse, isn't it? Yeah. Like it's the lighter. Yeah. That's obviously, and I understand where this comes from. It's it's deep rooted in racism, and that is all about the proximity to whiteness, and that's mm. obviously celebrated because that's what you know the colonizers came around and and told us. You know, we're gonna we're gonna pick the lighter ones, and they're gonna be the ones in control, and blah blah blah, and they're gonna you know whatever. So that was determined as 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 the standard of beauty, and it still is perpetuated as the standard of beauty yeah. in, in so many cultures around the world. That the fairer, the fairer ones. Mm. But I'm gonna play a little bit of devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I'll play devil's advocate once you explain Rochelle Humes and what she said. What yeah. did she say back? So basically, she said, you know, basically don't shoot the messenger. Okay. Uh, she said, Fair um, which is very true um you know bbc would have approached her Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know said you know we've got this program and things and people were saying you know oh she should have turned uh, she turned turned it down down. but are you you the one feeding her family that's 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 (laughs) the only thing that gets it gets so problematic isn't it feeding her family she's got how many children in this pandemic yeah and this thingy and stuff like that when do you see people turn down yeah. work like yeah. it's not like that and and no offense to Rochelle but she's not like a presenter like that where she could afford to turn down work I'm not I know this is gonna sound this is sound is so shady Alex I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I'm so sorry it sounds so shady but she's not she's not like um I get it. Yeah, get yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. She, yeah. She, she's she's not the number one person no. that, that people call to come to and come present. And present it. Yeah, so yeah. for her, like to get this, it's just like, oh shit. Yeah. Let, mm-hmm. Oh god, sorry for swearing. It's like, oh, let me take this. Um, yeah, and and kind of run with it. Like as she as she should, right? Yeah. And um, so yeah, so she basically said, you know, don't shoot the message. All mm-hmm. she's there is to provide kind of you know, people shouldn't lose sight of, you know, the work that she is doing and it's to create a platform um, for these voices to be heard. The only thing that was a little bit problematic, I thought personally, and this is just me personally, about her statement was that she felt in her statement, she said she feels like she she should use the privilege of her platform uh, to address issues and raise issues like this. I'm not sure what kind of platform Rochelle has. Um, that is your third jab. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be into this. I'm like, 10 minutes in. 10 minutes in. <laughs> it makes it seem like I don't like Rochelle and I really actually like her. I actually really, really like her. And I love, I actually follow her on Instagram. Like, I really actually like her. <laughs> but it was just, I felt like it, you know, maybe it's just me being shady, but I felt like she, it was just the way she said it. Yeah. It was the way she said it, like, you know, her platform, like she had a better platform than Candice. Okay, than Candice. Okay, I get it. That's the way I interpreted it. Obviously, that's just my interpretation. Yeah. Um, To raise awareness. And I'm Mm -hmm. just like, well, who are you going to be like all to your the Saturdays fans and stuff like that? Is that the platform you're going to be? Oh, no, but isn't she on This Morning? Yeah. She's on This Morning, right? So yeah. This Morning's got a big... That's, and this is what I was going to say, like, in terms of playing, like, devil's advocate, yeah. right? So... 
what about if they just went with her because of her pull, her reach, basically? Because if you're on this morning, which is on Monday to Friday with Holly, it's Holly Willoughby and what's the Phil. other guy? Phil. What's his name? Schofield. Philip Schofield, Schofield right? Mm-hmm. Those two are definitely top tier presenters for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? No, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna let you land. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're definitely. I, I know. I know. Holly Willoughby's line gets called. You know, for for yeah, like stuff. you don't. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of when I was thinking about Rochelle. So it's like okay. Holly Willoughby has the choice to be like, nah, this is for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, go. Okay, yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. those two, like, obviously they're, they're veterans. They've been doing it for, for a really, really long time. And especially with Holly, I've kind of, we've seen her her glow up yeah. to where she is now. Yeah. So I guess because Rochelle is on this morning, yeah. she, whatever she does, I suppose, will pull that kind of audience in. Yeah. And we within the black community, I think a lot of us as women are very aware of you know, the the mortality rate of women, mm-hmm. of black women versus white women when it comes to childbirth. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe black men may not be as aware, mm-hmm. but I think as, as black women, once you get to childbearing age, that's something that you're aware of because, you know, maybe your friends or family members or somebody that you know was, was put in a compromised position, yeah. unfortunately, whilst giving birth um, on the NHS, that kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. so we within our community know, mm-hmm. right? We need to reach out to the masses. We need the masses to know Mm -hmm. that this is a problem and that it needs to change. Something needs to be done about it. Yeah. So how I kind of saw it was Mm -hmm. maybe they got Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Maybe she may not be the best presenter. Mm -hmm. She may not have done as much research as Candice. Mm -hmm. She may not be as well versed as Candice. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. But... She has the reach and ultimately it's about the reach because the more people that watch, the more money it makes Mm -hmm. and and all that kind of stuff. That's what they want to see. So that's what I thought. I thought Mm. from my Mm -hmm. point of view that they they went with her because first and foremost, in the space of of media, how many black women do we have Mm -hmm. that are prominent? Mm -hmm. I I, off the top of my head, I, I can't think of any that are not any that are dark skin anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I get you. I get you. So maybe that's the reason why they went with... I'm not saying it's right. No, no, no. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I get that. I but get I can that. understand why they, why they, they went, went that with her. Way. Yeah, yeah. I was just a bit... Um, I was a bit on the fence. Like, I could see it, uh, as I always am. I could definitely see it from both sides. Mm-hmm. Like, I got the kind of Candy's side being like a dark skinned black girl like I, I got I kind of got it from that side yeah but then I also got it from Rochelle's side like sometimes you know it's not about you know who's presenting it's just about you know the the awareness that is being brought out then yeah. is coming onto a platform like the BBC but like I said the BBC are for me they are so problematic mm-hmm. I find them so problematic and you'll notice they keep doing things like this but anyways um, I think that's the only reason why I was a little bit... Maybe not not all of the BBC, but some BBC yeah. members, because you never know in the future, we might work with them. <laughs> <laughs> God bless the BBC. <laughs> so, so, so some. Yeah. Obviously, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing with all companies, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, some. they might get a bad rep because of a couple of people. And yeah. a lot of the time, it's the executives at the top mm. who are older and not quite in tune with what's going on or they just choose to blissfully be ignorant yeah and um yeah you know it's kind of like oh it's a shame Mm. and sometimes with these big corporations they just stick to what they know because that's what they can't be bothered to do anything else or it's like you know what this we know that this is going to make us money so we're just going to continue to do that basically Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 But yeah, you know, if you start start employing people that are gonna teach you guys about um, diversity and people that you're gonna listen to as well. Yeah, yeah. you know, don't just employ because I feel like there was the whole diversity thing during um, Black Lives Matter where they were employing this person and that person to give diversity talks, but whether they actually took it on board in these companies is 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 another is a different thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know, BBC. If you fix up, maybe we can work with you guys. <laughs> we could do our documentary. <laughs> Don't have to give it to Rochelle. <laughs> yeah, because people won't complain if it's me and you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, if they're complaining, then they're, they're, they're hating. Like, what is, what is your problem? We have mouths to feed. <laughs> I'm, just, Absolutely. I'm just trying to make no, my money. It's true. 
It's so true. Yeah. And I got that point. I really, really got that point. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, as a bi- she's a businesswoman. She's a mum, you know. Yeah. She needs to get mm-hmm. she needs to get her coins. So yeah. even though it shouldn't be about money, of of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because it's a really, really serious issue to talk about. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes I get it because some people think that because it but that's not how Entertain- it's not entertainment, but that's not how television programs work a lot of the time, is it? It's not about the people that go through certain things that necessarily present on them, if that mm. makes sense. Sometimes mm. they're the background kind of as executive producers, and I think that's the kind of step they wanted to take with this, with like kind of Candy's like helping out, okay. but maybe not being the, not face, being the face of right, it because right. it's too close to home. But it makes it a little bit real though if she was a host talking about it because it's something that she's truly passionate about mm-hmm. like yeah I don't know mm-hmm. but you could say that for a lot of programs it's, it depends what kind of programs because you have programs on televisions where the host has got absolutely no idea about thing in like for instance like Stacey Dooley like when she does all of these random programs going into these places um, she's not gone through it but she might talk about yeah, it yeah, yeah. and speak to victims of it mm-hmm. but you know, you don't discredit her as a presenter in that sense just because she hasn't necessarily been through it. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just a bit on the fence about that one. Yeah. I can't lie. No, I I, I get it. I understand. Yeah. I guess obviously it's what it's something that is um a matter of the chest mm. for most of us, you know. It is our lives that are at risk every time, you know, you go in to go and have a child. Mm. And it's something that a lot of us think about in in our community. And it's part of the reason why, you know, I started the PBP series Mm. on on this channel. So on YouTube, if you are following Advice with Alex, then you'll see it pop up. And um, because I I had a positive birthing story and I feel like um, it's obviously fantastic that we need to shed light on the negativity. Mm -hmm. But I also, the best piece of advice I'd, I'd give to every single pregnant woman is to focus on the positive stories. You cannot afford to be around and listen to the negative stories, unfortunately, Mm. because that isn't everybody's reality. Mm. Even though we're more prone to it, that isn't everybody's reality. And you can't afford to be stressed out or worrying about, you know, oh, my life is going to be at risk. I think it's good to be aware and make sure that you and your birthing partner are going to speak up for, um, for you it, mm-hmm. should anything happen and that's the thing I think because I was so well versed on it when I went in and I, I had my son I think I was I was ready mm-hmm. oh I was re- <laughs> I was ready yeah. like you what we're not going to do is make me do something I don't want to do do yeah. you know what I mean so I feel like I was yeah. very much aware and in control and yeah and I, I had that support and yeah. that was fine but I think sometimes um, we don't always feel like we necessarily have that voice. And even when women are speaking up, mm. they're not always listened to. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. that's why it was a it was a big shame during the pandemic when there were so many women that were given birth on their own. Oh, God, it was awful. Um, or they only had their partners for, or the birthing partner present for just the birth and then that was it. Because mm. I, I, I couldn't have imagined going through that. And I know so many people who did. And, and it's like, Shout out to you guys for doing that, but that's not fair. That's no. that's not something that should have happened. They they definitely should have handled that better because it's not easy. You know, you're you. There's so many things yeah. going through Can your mind. Yeah, yeah. And you just need someone. Like realistically, you know, I haven't been through it, but realistically, you know, there's only so much nurses yeah. can bring and give to you. Yeah. Like that's why it's nice to have a loved one there with you the whole during the whole piece yeah. and even afterwards yeah. just to because they know mm-hmm. just they someone, have your best interest yeah. at heart and I'm not saying that I, I do believe that the majority of nurses and midwives especially mm. midwives for me are a different breed like I genuinely believe that mid uh, you know I, I, I've had all positive experiences with midwives I've never met a nonsense one personally mm. Um, and I do believe as a whole that medical professionals do want what's best for uh, their patients. Mm. I do believe that. But unfortunately, they're not always able to give that care. Mm. And sometimes um, and that can be deep rooted in racism because there's even racism in the textbooks and in the learning of, of medicine. And it just regards white patients, for example, like if the patient turns blue. OK, well, I'm black, so I don't know doesn't how. Fit. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't quite fit. No. Nah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. 
This it's the entire system. It is. It is. It's the entire system that has to just be uprooted and we've got to start again, start afresh. Yeah. Start afresh. And I think also for us as black people, I would love it if we had more black hospitals. Mm. I don't even know if there's black hospitals. Let me not say that there isn't any, but I would love what if there was... What do you mean by black hospitals? I mean, black hospitals for black people. Like, you know how Jewish people... I'm sure Jewish people have their things. I don't know if Jewish oh. people have hospitals. I'm assuming that they do. I don't know if they do, but this is just a wild <laughs> assumption. It's just because they have everything else. Yeah. But I feel like it would be great if we had black hospitals that is run by, you know, I don't know... the who owns hospitals but run by black people and Mm -hmm. has black members of staff and uh, do you know what I mean run by black people and serves yeah (laughs) come on come on can you imagine after you give birth I don't want like a measly sandwich I want jello fries (laughs) plantain chicken do you know what I mean mean? some real food some real food that's true so it would be it would be so interesting if we if we had you know black hospitals that were run by us and for us and that would hopefully alleviate some of the music in the background yeah sorry yeah do you know what I mean just for just some yeah yeah (laughs) although sometimes you do get unfortunately black health professionals who mm. <sighs> i'm not i'm yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know you this, know who you are <laughs> the Uncle Tom's, or the people that just don't get it or we're all the same like no it's different no, anyway honey. those ones should not yeah. even be employed <laughs> continue to go work in whatever hospital it is that you work in do not come to this hospital but this one should be run you know but by us and and should be for us basically yeah, yeah I would love, it would be a beautiful thing to to see that to just see. more things for us in our community you mm. know people say it's segregation yeah it's segregation but i can't trust mainstream to put us first mm. Because we've seen it fail us time and time again. Yeah. So why do we continue to hope, oh, one day it's going to be different? It's not going to be different. It's never going to change. So let's just have our own things. Yeah. And just coexist. Yeah, essentially. (laughs) Um, Such a good shout. Yeah. So, you know, all of you venture capitalists out there, start putting money toward that. All you people in Clubhouse that, you know, you. anyway. Yeah. That is something that should be discussed and um, be put forward, I think, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Good shout. And schools and all that stuff. Just just stuff, you know, f- for us. And I think we also have to make a conscious effort in order to support our own as well. Like, for example, I feel like I've spoken to, about this before mm. on the podcast. This is a while back. But talking about, um, like, black hair shops. Like, actually going to the hair shops that are owned by blacks mm-hmm. as opposed to other races. It's important for us to support our own. You know, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, sometimes it can be so cheap, though. Yeah, like <laughs> the price. Prices. The prices are more because expensive. Yeah. I could go to, you know, shop down the road. Packs or Pax. whatever. Oh, you took the word right out of my <laughs> word, my mouth. Yeah, go to Packs, right, and they sell this for three ninety nine, and then I'll go to another one, and they sell it for six ninety nine. Obviously, I, I yeah. I want to support, mm-hmm. but then the black in me is cheap. And then it, it stops me from supporting, mm. which is a massive trip up. But I am learning now to sometimes be like, you know what? I want to see black people thrive. So if yeah. I have to spend an extra two, three quid, yeah, you know, um, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more happy to now. And there seems to be, you know what is so great about this pandemic as well? There seems to be so many um, black people doing it, even like um, selling hair stuff on websites mm-hmm. or like price comparison websites, which you can go on. And it's really, really good, actually. So now mm-hmm. there's no need for me to go to PAX anymore because... It's all online. My black queens have put it all online. <laughs> so, yeah, and which suits me even better. Yeah. Because I know exactly what I want. I buy the same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. So it just, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. We've got to do right by us and love us and support us. Yeah. Which brings me to the next topic, which is um, talking about... The rise and rise of BBLs, oh. particularly within our community. So I'm not talking about um, as a whole. Mm. I'm just talking about within our 
our space yeah. and why that is, you know, because BBLs have been around for like 30 years. Yeah. You know, they got quite popular back in the 90s. Everybody wants it now. Yeah. But it's 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 becoming quite rife and bad now, I feel like. It's rife and bad, what do you mean? Like um, the frequency of people going out to have it and bad as in people aren't, it feels like they're not doing... Cheap is not always best. We spoke about it in another episode. Yep, yep. It is, guys, please. This is your one body. There's no other body. There's no, the, you know, you can't. Say, can you say that again? Yeah, this is yeah. your what? This is your one okay. body. All right. Like, this is the one body God gave to you. This is it. Like, treat it like a temple. Mm. You wouldn't, you know, put, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to compare it to, but. You know, take time, you know, research. Um, you've got to spend money realistically. And you've seen so many stories about people like going to Turkey and all of these places and and for a quick fix because it's super cheap out there. But then the problems afterwards, all for Nyash. <laughs> all for Nyash. <laughs> 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 <sighs> like it's just and it's I don't know it's just become it's been really like sad to see you know <sighs> this is gonna sound problematic but it feels a bit like black women aspiring to be this one body shape yeah there's just the one body shape now this small middle out back in Mm -hmm. Big thighs, big bum, but a flat stomach. The thighs don't always match. The thighs don't match. The bum doesn't always match too sometimes. No, do you know what it is? The bum... If the thighs and hips... Yes. Hips. ...were better placed... Yes, you're right. Then it, would ma then it would look okay, but it's not quite um, the same. And like you said, everybody's going for the same body type. And that's the thing with a BBL. You know, if you got a BBL according to your body shape or frame... Yeah. Yeah, it would be more subtle yeah. and nobody would necessarily know that you even got it done. It'd just be like, oh yeah, she's, she looks like she's been working out in the gym. And you can be yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, that's what I've been doing because I don't believe in telling everybody your business. If, Absolutely. If, you know, Whatever nobody needs to know what's yeah, going yeah. on with you. That's totally fine by you. But um, when you're going for what I call the toothpick look, because basically that's what, <laughs> that's what it is. Or the tooth, yeah, the tooth look, yeah. Because you know a tooth at the top, yeah, it's like yes, this, and then at the bottom you've got like, like you know, yeah, yeah. I know exactly <laughs> what I know exactly how you're trying to explain it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what seems to be that's what seems to be it these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With obviously you know like a a very cinched waist. Yeah. Um, and then people will say with chest that they didn't get it done. Again, it's up to you. It's up to you. If yeah. you want to admit to it or not, that's totally fine by me. I'm not going to ask anybody questions. No. I, my eyes don't deceive me. I know when someone's had a BBL. Yeah, the before and after don't lie. Yeah, like I was Absolutely. very... Absolutely. Yeah. I, I saw you last I week. I saw you last week. I saw you last month. You were you were an, you were size six. Yeah, and 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 even even still, you know, there's some people like you. I've seen you when you've lost weight. I've seen you when you put on weight. Yeah. No, at no point. Did you ever look like this? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and it's like a one size fits all approach, isn't it? Pam's got this body, so that body is duplicated or replicated on Keisha. But everyone takes the same. And everyone takes the same approach. Yeah, every, 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 everyone takes the same like picture. Picture. Like I'm going to look like her, Doctor Agba. Yeah, <laughs> I want to look like that. Like yeah, like yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, be do doctor like Mehmet. Yeah, Mehmet. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to Turkey. Turkey. Yeah, <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. You know, so but yeah, everybody, everybody wants to 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 look the same. But you know what? Like again, um, just the rise and rise of 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 surgery as a whole. Mm. I think part of the reason why that there are more people doing this obviously because nowadays it's more affordable I suppose or there's a more affordable ways in order for you to, to do get it. like a plan because you can do like the payment plan. plans can't yeah. you I, yeah. I never knew that but you can do payment plans and obviously people have found ways abroad um, that is even cheaper than in the UK or in the UK we we would do things to a certain standard yeah and, if it, if it was botched then you could sue or whatever absolutely and the thing about going abroad is 
those same Whatever. regulations and standards may not be held up to you. And I'm going back to what you said earlier yeah. on, you were like, you know, it's one body, you wouldn't put certain things into your body on it. Some people would. Yeah. Some people don't treat their bodies with respect, but, you know, for example, the things that they eat and drink mm. and substances and all sorts of things that like they don't actually have a high regard for for their body, their body. Yeah, yeah and this is just another thing to add to that yeah why do you think that is why do you think that as a whole like i'm just again i'm going back yeah. to you to black people because that's the only people i can kind of speak of yeah. in, in terms of this issue but why do you think that we don't have a high regard for our bodies as a whole i think people are probably just see stuff celebrities like they see it on the internet they mm-hmm. see how these models and stuff that that look at we see how you know people in the industry treat girls that have got a small middle and mm-hmm. big waist and mm-hmm. you know we see those are the girls that get wifed up and mm-hmm. things like that you know when even you look at celebrities like realistically they all have got the same body type now mm-hmm. now they do mm-hmm. um and i think us black women kind of aspire that to say okay well if I look like that Mm -hmm. then I'm beautiful or Mm -hmm. you know that's that's what gets the men going I guess Mm -hmm. and I don't know why but they forget that these celebrities will probably spend the money to go and get it done they're going to the professionals yeah they're going to that's why um Kim Kardashian you can't say anything to her (laughs) because I don't know about Kim's bum, but yeah, but certain people you just can't say anything to them mm-hmm. because they probably got it done by a professional. Yeah. But girls are going to seek this, you know, really, really um, cheap places. Um, and it's just putting themselves at risk. And you just think, you know, would you put your life at risk all for a body shape? Like, is it really that deep at the end of the day? Is it, you know, that much of an I don't know but I can't I can only talk for myself because I can't talk for other people because Mm -hmm. I don't know how other people feel in their own bodies Mm -hmm. and things and you know I kind of understand it but I'm just I'm just thinking like you know what would drive someone to go and do that serious insecurities yeah you know serious insecurities I think it starts it starts young it starts from in the home for a lot of people, you know, being insecure about their weight. I watched the Wendy Williams movie. Oh, okay. No, yeah. I have watched that. And um What was it about? Just her life? Yeah, just her life. And you see like what happened with like her ex husband and stuff like that. And um Who plays Wendy Williams? Some woman. She she did a good job. Oh really? I, I don't know I don't know who she is. Okay. I'm saying okay. some woman I shout out to whoever she is. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, but she she I think she did a good job. I think she 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 got Wendy's mannerisms and the way she's been <laughs> like down, down yeah. to the tea. Okay. And um in in the movie it kind of opens up with her being the larger child or the chubbier child and mm. you know, her dad says to her, um, you you know, you would be even prettier if you lost some weight. Mm. She's not she's probably not even ten yet. Mm. You know? And there's things like that that people sit on. You know, they've received comments like that from family members Mm. and I think obviously when you have family members that say things it it does cut deep yeah we all have yeah that one auntie that you see every time and say oh you've put on some weight it is your it is your husband that's put on weight are you are you dumb (laughs) are you actually dumb but this is auntie that's that's yeah you know you know hello chunky herself yeah, but yeah. she's telling you that you've put on a little bit of weight so yeah. yeah you're right yeah especially in the black community right but, and but when you're young you don't realize that it's projection mm. the reason why auntie has singled out your weight is because she has an issue with her weight yeah absolutely. you know she doesn't feel okay with her, but you don't understand that as a child so that's mm. something that you carry around with you and you know the more people that say it, it's almost like the more real it becomes like mm. if so many people ask keep talking to me about my weight then there must be something wrong with it unfortunately and that's that's why when it comes to validation we have to not seek it from others mm. and obviously again you're a kid you don't get that grown adults that's something that we all kind of struggle with in terms of like seeking validation and stuff so I feel like for most people it kind of starts off in the home then you go to school and then you've got people saying things then you go to secondary school and then you've got the boys picking us girls that look a certain way and and even like when it comes to guys certain guys get mocked for liking girls that look a particular way for example the marga girls the slim girls like i I, i've seen people mock guys that like girls that are slim 
Oh, slim. Just yeah, slim. that skinny. You're skinny. Yeah, skinny. Oh, okay. Basically. Wow. I don't want to say skinny to like yeah. offend anyone. No, okay, like, no, I don't. Like, no, you know what yeah. I mean? Like on the slimmer side of things, basically. Yeah. And it's like, but if that's what they like, that's what they like. So it's like there's this obsession with the hourglass figure within the black community. Men actually, wow, that is crazy. Yeah. I mean, everyone's entitled to have their opinion. Everyone's entitled to have their opinion and preference. For sure. Yeah. Not everybody necessarily is going to go for that that body type. Or some people just like the person. So it doesn't matter about their body. They just like the person. And that's why they're going to go, like, you know, go with yeah. them. And so I think for me, for somebody to go under the knife and put their lives at risk, especially for a BBL, because in, in your bum, you've got some major arteries. And obviously going and doing a BBL compromises those arteries. And yeah. It's a, a risky surgery. Yeah. So in order for you to do that for... For what? For... for In order for you to, ha- like, have a, a bigger bum or a mm. plumper bum or a rounder bum or whatever it is... Yeah. I think that there must be some serious deep-rooted insecurities that you must have. And maybe you think that by having this body type, it's going to help you to advance, like you said, in yeah. life. Maybe get more career opportunities. Maybe possibly. get a partner. Yeah, possibly. Maybe help you to look younger. Because you can see it, like, even when you watch celebrities, especially, like, US celebrities, you can tell, like, with the women, you know, it's been, like you said, to further their career, you Mm -hmm. know, to be, if they wanted to be, like, um, work on videos, video models and things like that. They feel like they need to have a certain shape to be kind of sexy. Um, But, uh, yeah... I don't know. It'd be interesting to 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 find out if anybody's had like surgery in that sense and the reasons why they I'm why always interested yeah. in things like that, understanding the reasons yeah. why. Because obviously I can only speak from a point where I haven't. So mm-hmm. I'm I, I maybe it's a point where I just don't know. Mm-hmm. Um but I just don't want us to become so obsessed with kind of the way we look in that sense, mm-hmm. especially with our body types. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, God blesses everybody with their own little thing, yeah, right? You can't that's be perfect. What makes you that's what makes you unique. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's nice. Like you should have a feature on you which is unique to you. Um, you know, everybody has stuff which they dislike about their body, and that's just life, right? Mm-hmm. You can't get upset about every. You can't be perfect. But you know, thank God for the little things you have, like you know, a pretty face or a banging personality or. You know, there is no perfect for me body size, big, small, whatever. You know, all women are just beautiful. And I wish people would just understand that a little bit more mm-hmm. and just and I feel like I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because I think it's taken me a, quite an, a long time to even myself kind of accept the way I am in terms of my body shape and how how I look. But, um, yeah, I just think it's sometimes it's just quite... I'm sad. And even when you sometimes you hear people when um, things have gone wrong and then you hear their story afterwards and even they're saying, you know, girls and, you know, especially for influencers that are, you know, they know they've got like a younger audience. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm looking at like my sister, you know, who follows influencers, you know, these are the kind of people where you'd be like, oh, I wish you wouldn't listen to them Mm -hmm. because I don't want them to lead you astray in that sense. Although... People, everybody should have their own mind, right? Yeah, you can yeah, listen yeah. to influencers, yeah. be, but you there should, should be, be a firm be, foundation yeah, beforehand. Yeah. Absolutely, they can't say jump and you say how high. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in that, but um, I'm just saying because you know, when people see like the same body type and things, you know, girls will, especially from a young age, be thinking, "Oh, I need to have a flat stomach, big thighs, big bum, and stuff," and that's what would attract um, men. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, just wanted yeah. to. Or even just attract a partner, because it would be interesting to know, I'm sure, like, within the LGBTQ plus community, mm-hmm. if that's still the thing, if it's that's still prevalent, if BBLs are still up there, mm. if that makes sense. It'll be, or, for example, in, like, lesbian relationships, do mm. people still go out of their way to get a, a BBL, for example? Because when I associate getting a BBL I think of like it doing it for men straight yeah, yeah that's what I think yeah. in my mind but yeah. it'd be interesting like do are, are these people just doing it as a whole to attract a partner or is it something specifically for for men yeah almost yeah you know what I mean so it'd be interesting to kind of um see it from that angle but yeah 
you know, we all, like you said, we all have insecurities. Some insecurities are deeper than others for each person. Absolutely. But now more than ever, we definitely need to take the time to kind of address these insecurities that we have and focus on the strengths that we have as people mm. and appreciate who we are as people mm. and allow people to like know us and love us for us and mm. not necessarily what we can do for people, what we look like or that kind of thing. Like who we are as people needs to be the center of attention and it's hard for us as women and that's why I don't I don't come down on women about it because we are in a man's world yeah and we didn't make the rules we're just trying to survive yeah through it do you know yeah. what I mean and that's why I think that so many women focus on their looks because it's like okay well if I have this down pack then I'm going to be able to secure this for myself and mm, move forward and do you know what that. I mean there's so much emphasis on on having a man attached to you in your life yeah, and again, it'd be interesting to to speak to lesbians and yeah. see how they kind of navigate that space as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I try not to come down on women. I try to understand it from their point of view because mm. it's hard. It's hard. It's hard being women. It's hard being a woman. It is so hard. Mm. Everything, your body, then there's your face, then the oh my god, there's so much. Yeah. That just it can really kind of mess you up a little bit because when you mm. think about all those like little nitpicks that people can look at you know we spoke about colorism first that's one thing you know sometimes yeah. the light skin versus dark skin mm -hmm. argument and then you go down to the body type then the versus the slim girl versus the thick girl you know it feels never ending for black women sometimes yeah, it never it's is it's just never good enough yeah so that's why you make your own rules make your own body shape make your own you you is fine mm -hmm. You is fine. It's more, yeah, it's more than enough. And if people don't want to accept you, then that is their own personal problem. You know, yeah. not everybody is deserving of you. Yeah. And um, we have to make sure that we're doing things because we want to do them and doing things that serve us. And, I mean, if you sit down and you go through your checklist of, of everything and you decide that you still want to go through with a BBL, okay, fine. Um, do just your research. Do your, do your research and make sure you're doing it with a certified person that yeah. is, everything is safe and... And I hope it brings you happiness once yeah. you have it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, again, it'll be interesting to talk to people and, and see, well, once they got the BBL, did it boost your confidence? Did, did it change, change how yeah. you felt about the, yourself? That, yourself. Oh, yeah. Or did it make it worse? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Or did it bring around the wrong attention? Because mm. you did have that body shape then. Were mm. you getting too much attention from the wrong kind of people? Right, yeah, yeah. Because they just assumed, you said, oh, she's nice or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be so, such an interesting um, talk. Of it. But shout out as well to like some of the influencers that are kind of raising awareness about it now, mm -hmm. just to kind of, you know, guide other people and just saying, you know, it's not, it, you know, do your research, like you said. Um, take time and really consider it just like any surgery really consider whether you need it or not mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah no definitely well what would you say to your younger self oh on the th on the just keeping it on the same level of what we've kind of spoken about I think it would just be just be more confident in kind of body yep and appearance yep um learn to love yourself mm -hmm. um it's it's you know it's okay being any body sh type as yeah. long as you're happy and as long as you're content um there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. and i think just loving yourself for that and don't don't listen to what other people might say about it mm -hmm. um if you're happy you're content you know that's that's the best thing mm -hmm. because for me someone saying oh never you need to lose weight and stuff like that that sounds like a you problem yeah um yeah. Yeah. And that's something that I can change if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But for me, someone saying, oh, Novella, you're a nasty person, that's worse. Mm. Because sometimes you can't change. You can change who you are, but sometimes it's a little bit harder. And I think I'd rather be known for being a nicer person for me than a person that has, like, the perfect body shape. Yeah. I am who I am. Yeah, which is even still subjective, isn't it? Yeah. It might be the perfect body shape to somebody else. And to somebody else. Might be like, mm. Yeah, it fits me she's, fine. she's fat. Yeah. <laughs> do you know okay. what I mean? Or she's too skinny or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You can't make people happy. You just have to do what what is going to be best for you, isn't it? Yeah. And um, I think, for me, what would I say to my younger self? I think I'd say to my younger self, um, to... Like whenever something like triggers you, mm -hmm. 
go to the root of that thing. Mm. You know, for example, like somebody might get onto you about your weight Mm. and it's like, that's triggering for you. Understanding why that triggers, where did that come from? For most people, it's kind of stems from their childhood. Yeah. Um, Something happened, somebody said something to you, somebody did something to you. And I think it's also important for us to just heal our childhood uh, traumas as Mm. a whole Mm. so that we can, you know, like adult at the best level, you know, really, you know, do this thing called adulting at the highest (laughs) level or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And also, again, when you heal the kind of childhood traumas that you have, you don't seek the outside validation, mm-hmm. good or bad. Because I've said that beforehand, like, you know, it's when people are saying bad things about you, it's one thing, but it's also important for you to not seek validation yeah. in terms of good things as well. Yeah. Like, where, how do you feel about you? So to, to the point where you're so happy and confident within yourself that when you walk into a room, whether people compliment you or they, they say something negative, you're unshaken. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I know I'm the shit. Yeah. <laughs> who, who are you to open your dirty mouth to come and even tell me anything anyway? Yeah. Do you know what I so mean? True. And that's not to I say that, that you shouldn't gash your people up. Of course, gash yeah. your people up. I think that's important to do. But like, you know, if you get a compliment, okay, cool. Like, fine. That That's just an additional bonus. But I know within myself that I am happy and I'm confident within this. Yeah. And being able to to identify those people that go out of their way to project and to re- deflect onto you. Like you walked into this room and you're happy and you're smiling and it's bothering them. And that's why they want to say, oh, Oh, you, you you put on weight okay mm. and and yeah i was eating food i was enjoying <laughs> it's winter time it's cold i need extra fat yeah. what is your problem absolutely do you know what i mean like stating the obvious i hate those people like you know for example when your petrol light comes on or your petrol light come on but I, I saw it i saw it i drive the car every day i saw it honestly honestly <sighs> anyway anyway <laughs> On that note, um, make sure that you follow the podcast at Advice with Alex on Instagram and on Twitter as well for up to date information and so on and so forth. And make sure that you subscribe, please, because then you just don't ever miss an episode. So if you're on Spotify, you can subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts, you can subscribe. And whenever it comes up, it just, you know, you can just enjoy the episode straight away and of course if you're on youtube you get the little notification so make sure that obviously you press the bell as well to always so any video that comes up you know that you don't miss us on a wednesday every single time that we come out and um yeah make sure that you continue to like the post interact with us in the comments as well absolutely you know let youtube know that we are that you're enjoying our content And yeah, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.